Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. It's a beautiful sunny afternoon here, and I've got two identical Tesla Model Y next to me, both long-range versions. And what we're going to do in this video is show you what acceleration boost is, how you buy it, how you install it, and demonstrate exactly the difference. We can use the two cars to show you one with it and one without it, do some timings, put them side by side. So stick around, it should be really good fun. So let me begin. It's uh, 19 degrees Celsius today, a beautiful warm day, so the cars should be able to perform at their best because they don't perform brilliantly when they're cold. They are both identical cars. They've even got the same 20 inch wheels. The only difference is the external paint color, but I don't think that's gonna make a difference to this test. Then what we can do is show you exactly how we install it and what it is and what Tesla claim it does, but then go and test this. So I've got a draggy. I'm gonna do some 0 to 60 runs with a draggy in each car. And what we can do today as well, they've both been treated exactly the same, these two cars today. <clears throat> in fact, neither of them have been driven yet. They've just both just been topped up to their 90% state of charge now. So they're exactly on level footing. We'll do some draggy tests, but I also want to show you kind of head to head what difference that will make. So maybe down the side here, we might have to do a bit of our traffic light Grand Prix. And then I'm intrigued to see with the Model Y, it's slower than the Model 3, it's heavier. But with the Model Y with acceleration boost, is that quicker than a Tesla Model 3 long range? Well, I've got one of them as well, so I'm gonna show you. Okay, so what is acceleration boost? So acceleration boost is an option which you can just buy on the app, and I'll show you that in just a second. It's only for the Model 3 and the Model Y long range models. So bear in mind, as I said, the, the Model Y performance, we don't even have the option of that in this country yet, not until the end of this year. On the standard models, you don't get that at all. On the Model 3, Model Y long range, you do. So we're gonna demonstrate it with these two Model Ys today. And all, it's very easy, you can install it literally in minutes. It's as simple as that, it is instant. I didn't know if it'd take overnight or not, but it was instant. So you go into your car on the app, then you've got the option for upgrades. You go to software upgrades. And then there, you can see acceleration boost, 1,500 pounds. And on here it says improve 0 to 100 kilometers an hour time, five seconds to 4.4 seconds. So it should make a notable difference, right? And all you do is you hit that, add, pay for it, and then the car will ideally need a Wi-Fi connection. So actually when I did this with the black car, I wasn't in the office, so I actually just tethered it to my phone's Wi-Fi and it configured straight away. So within a few minutes, I had the car was reconfigured with acceleration boost. And the one way to be sure that you've got it is when you go to driving from the controls menu, you've got chill mode and then you've got standard mode is the standard car. When you've got chill mode and sport mode, that then means that car has got acceleration boost. And it's as simple as that. So it's installed literally straight away. Don't even have to wait overnight for it as long as you've got some Wi-Fi, and that's it. So what difference will it really make in the real world? Let's go and find out. Let's do some first some timings with a draggy, and then we're gonna try and put them side by side and kind of make a more visual representation of the difference. We'll be, we don't have a runway, but we can do something down the side of our traffic light Grand Prix. Okay, let's start off with a standard car. I'm in the blue one with that acceleration boost, 90% battery. Car's reading 22 degrees Celsius, but it's been sat in the sun. So let's see what we get. Three, two, one, go. Whee! Mash the pedal to the floor. Three, two, one, go. Mash the pedal to the floor. Okay, now the black car with the acceleration boost. I have to say straight away, you do feel a difference. Just pulling out of a junction, it's much more lively. You do notice it straight away. It's, it's not something you won't notice. And uh, it just feels really, to me, much more like a Tesla Model 3 long range. So. I'll, might do the same with the Model 3 long range, see if it's as quick as that. But um, yeah, you do notice it straight away, so that's nice. And I'm gonna set myself up for doing a few timed runs. So, for fear of bringing up my lunch shortly after, let's do a few timings and see what we can get from this one. One hold, one sport, go. Yeah, <laughs> make sure that guys. feel the difference that's good Way. okay so this is our model 3 long range just out of curiosity to see if this is the same as the wire with the performance boost so let's reset some gear here let's wait for a gap in traffic and we'll pull out and start the timing and let's start the timing now everything's the same three two one go Whee, there we go uh, cool that Three, two, one, let's go. Yep, yep, yep.
So to summarize the results from the draggy test, this standard one does 0 to 60 in about five seconds real world. So that's a little bit slower than Tesla put 4.8 on their website. We've got to remember that they include a usually one foot rollout in super optimal conditions. And we never quite hit the numbers that Tesla published. So five seconds, 0 to 60 real world in the standard car. With the performance acceleration boost, we were getting about 4.3 quite consistently. So about seven tenths a quicker. The Model 3 long range by comparison, we're getting about 4.4s on that. Again, consistent results. So the Model Y with acceleration boost is just a little bit quicker than the Model 3 long range. Although on the road, they feel very similar, I'll give them that, but it does mean this now feels as quick as the Model 3. But how are they gonna feel in the drag strip? This is our drag strip, <laughs> our traffic light Grand Prix, about 50 meters where we can get up to kind of 0 to 30, 0 to 40 miles an hour. How much does that actually translate in the real world? How far ahead would you be if you left the traffic lights at the same time? Let's find out. You jump to start. No, you jumped it. Yes, that's the one! Whoa. That was dead even. So is that about car length? Was it? A ton. I think it's about car length. But I think this would keep pulling for a while. Yeah, I think it'd keep pulling for a while. Do one more? So. The acceleration boost is a bit quicker. But let's swap sides now and just check that it was not gaining an advantage because of a bit of dirt down here or something like that, just to try and make everything as fair as we can practically test with the resources we have. He's on that side now. You'll get beaten again, Gint. The car is extra 1,500 pounds. And the two races ago, we saw it didn't help you. <laughs> it's pure skills. I <laughs> don't think it is, pal. Pure skills. I <laughs> don't think it is. It is just quicker. It's taken ages just to get you to launch properly. Oh, he jumped it, he jumped it. Well, still quicker. Okay, so there we are. The acceleration boost definitely is quicker. So no false claims there from Tesla. Is it worth it? Well, that's very subjective. So. Initially, I sort of always thought, no, probably not. I mean, especially for this car over a Model 3, it's a bigger SUV type car, family car. What does it matter? What does that little bit of extra performance matter? Well, what it does do for me though, is it does feel sharper. Having been used to Model 3s for the last couple of years, it brings it back in line with that. So I don't feel wanting for that. So that's good. Um, but the second thing as well, as I always tend to niggle about with these cars, the ride is slightly on the firmer side. And yes, I've got the 20 inch wheels, but they're the same as the 19 inch wheels. I've driven both plenty and I can tell you that now. So it does have that slightly firmer ride, but I think now that it's just got that extra bite to the performance, it kind of justifies that firmer edge to it. So now it does feel like actually quite a sporty car, even though then at the weekend I go camping and family in it and dog and all that kind of stuff. So I actually do think it's worth it, but I think for most people, what does it really matter? It's only a little bit quicker. Um, when we come to the performance model at the end of this year for us in the UK, well, that's another 10,000 pounds over long range for probably about the same difference again in the real world. So that'll be a bit quicker, but not too much in it, possibly even firmer suspension. So justifying 10 grand over a long range to performance or, you know, eight and a half with a long range of performance boost to the performance. Well, yeah, that's what you've got to consider for yourselves, but that's down to you. I can't give you that judgment. I can just show you what happened today, but actually I'm quite pleased with it. So. Hope that's been interesting. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our videos. If you like our content and want to see more, don't forget to not only subscribe, but also hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any new videos as they're uploaded. Plus, we're also on Instagram. Just look up R Simons or RSEV. Us, we're on Facebook and Twitter. So lots of news, stories, and things as we go on each one of those channels.